Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu defying President Biden's call to de-escalate violence between Israel and the terror group Hamas. Netanyahu is saying he'll continue the operation until he returns calm and security to the people of Israel. A White House spokeswoman released in a statement saying this. The president conveyed to the prime minister that he expected a significant de-escalation today on the path to a ceasefire. Let's bring in Eugene Kantorovich. He's George Mason University law professor and director of the Colette Policy Forum. Eugene, there is reports that a ceasefire could be happening in the next 48 hours. What do you know about that? What about the pressure America is trying to place on Israel to try to do that? And what does Hamas get out of a ceasefire? Uh, Hamas w gets the most out of a ceasefire. So Hamas is an Iranian-backed terror group that last week began launching rockets on Israel uh, on, a, on an Israeli holiday. And uh, the United States and much of the international community is now saying that, in theory, they recognize Israel's right to self-defense. Under international law, every country has a right to defend itself and its citizens. But they're treating Israel unlike any other country in the world. They're putting a timer on the right to self-defense. You can defend yourself from an Iranian-backed terror group, but you have a week or two to do it. Now, when 9-11 uh, happened and the United States was attacked by the Taliban from Afghanistan, nobody said, we can defend ourselves from the Taliban, but we have a day, a week to finish it up. It's, in a sense, mm. restricting Israel's right to self-defense, and it lets Hamas get off the hook at the very end and live to fight another day. And, of course, it also shows the people there, you know, that, that Hamas has all of this power, all this um, weaponry. Do you, what do you think about this idea that Iran, backed Hamas, is trying to test Israel's capabilities so that it could come back stronger later? It's definitely testing Israel's military capabilities, uh, Israel's morale and reaction. But more importantly, it's testing the new president, President Biden. In the four years of the Trump administration, there was no barrage of rocket attacks of this scale. There's a new president, a president that's interested with rapprochement with Iran, and they want to see how far, how much he's going to do to restrict Israel. His instincts have been good, and he's affirmed Israel's right to self-defense, but he's under huge pr pressure from his progressive wing. And he's beginning to capitulate, it seems, to that, and begin to say is to Israel, you can defend yourself, but only up to a point. In fact, the Biden administration... And that's what Iran wants to see. Mm -hmm. The Biden administration uh, told The New York Times on background that President Biden was much tougher on Israel than uh, the public comments. And you know, I, can, I can imagine that that's true. Sometimes with your friends, you uh, criticize more in private and you praise in public. But this pressure that they're under, uh, you know, Nicholas Kristof of the New York Times writes this today. The unshakable bonds of friendship with Israel are shaking. He continues, some young Americans see the rise of this hawkish, more extremist Israel and perceive not a plucky democracy, but an oppressive military power. What strikes them most isn't democratic value so much as what Human Rights Watch calls crimes of apartheid. Your reaction to that? Yeah, the, the crazy thing about this is some people say, we're not against Israel, we're against the settlements, Israel's settlement policy. Gaza is a place where Jews used to live. There were Israeli settlements there. It was under Israeli military law. And in 2005, Israel left Gaza. They took every single Jew, both living and dead, out of Gaza. They unearthed the, the corpses from the cemeteries. And Gaza is completely under Palestinian control. What did Israel get for that? a barrage of rocket fire, and now when Israel is attacked from Palestinian-controlled Gaza, the international community blames Israel for, be, uh, for being aggressive, uh, militaristic, when it defends itself. What this shows Israelis is that the land for peace formula is not only crazy, it's not even going to get you the international approval uh, that is promised. Into the New York Post this is a purely has, defensive operation. Yeah, the New York Post has a piece that says yeah. Israel has acted like a moral beacon in the latest Gaza war against terror. And one of the things that it points out is that um, every single one of the people that has had to flee their homes um, or been rendered homeless, it basically they owe their current perilous condition to Hamas's strategy of interlacing its weaponry in and around Gaza citizenry. Is Israel able to help make that yeah, absolutely. point? Absolutely. Yeah, I think it's important to point out that, uh, you know, progressives like uh, John Oliver, who've criticized Israel's attacks on Gaza, what they're doing is essentially encouraging in the next round Hamas to locate their military facilities even more closely amongst civilians, amongst schools, amongst media sites. Because what they see is 
If Israel, it's a win-win for Hamas. Either Israel can't attack their military facilities and just has to put up with being bombarded, or when they strike military facilities, as international law allows, even if they're located among civilians, they're going to be blamed for Hamas putting civilians in the line of danger. So people who, uh, people who mm -hmm. criticize Israel for that, they're actually encouraging Hamas to do this and rewarding Hamas for their war crime. Eugene Kantorovich, encourage everybody to follow him. It's got some really good insights. Thank you for being here.